So if you're interested in building a Ryzen 3, 5 or 7 gaming PC, you're going to need a motherboard for that CPU to work. Now there's three main options, although I'm most, mostly going to be covering the sort of main two in this video. That will be X370, B350 and also the A320. Now the A320 is the locked platform, you can't overclock on it. So that one is going to be lightly excluded, although obviously this is the sort of the main mention of it in this video. So if you're interested in a basic bare bones motherboard that you don't want to overclock on, then these are the cheapest options. So coming back to the X370 and B350 motherboard, boards I want to give a quick rundown of what each of these platforms are mainly designed uh, and the markets are kind of aimed at first and then we'll go through the main differences between them. So with the X370 this is the higher end chipset this is the highest end chipset for the Ryzen 7, 5 and 3 platforms and this is uh, as said that the higher end so the board that I have here to showcase that is the MSI uh, X Power Titanium X370 board this one is one of the higher end uh, MSI boards they offer obviously there's also stuff like the ASUS Crosshair uh, 6 Hero board which I'm currently using in my desk PC and Gigabyte have a couple of other uh, I believe the Gaming 5 is currently the highest end board they do but still obviously relatively high end on the X370 front. The X370 platform is for people who want to really get the most out of their Ryzen boards whether that's via overclocking or via multi GPU or via just the sheer amount of IO and PCI slot avail availability you can get that uh, the X370 boards are for you. Moving on to the B350 side of things, this is for the general average consumer. So if you're someone who doesn't need multi-GPU, if you're someone who doesn't necessarily need all of the USB ports in the world, and if you're someone who still wants to overclock, then the B350 chipset is definitely where you want to go. The chipset doesn't allow for SLI, that's the main difference, and while it technically allows for Crossfire, it's not really recommended as the second PCIe lane on the larger of the uh, B350 boards, unlike this one, uh, the second X16 sized slot is actually running at X4, which is considerably slower and has to run through the chipset as well, so you may actually end up seeing performance degradation even with a game that does support Crossfire well. With the B350 board, you are more likely to see an ITX version like this one, the AB350N from Gigabyte. I know there is, a, I believe, a single uh, Biostar X370 uh, ITX board, but I think there are a couple of uh, B350 ITX boards, so generally speaking, you're going to see the uh, B350 chipset on there. The main reason for that is because, obviously, with an ITX board, you're not going to be doing Crossfire, and you're possibly not going to have the, the biggest collection of I.O. in the world just because of the sheer size uh, of the board that they have to work with there. There. So it's uh, you know, certainly a limitation and what you'd expect. Something I want to make clear and something that people keep asking is are the B350 boards just as good for overclocking as the X370 boards? And the general answer for that is yes. Now there are some limitations. If you're extreme heavy overclocking trying to get your Ryzen 3, 5 or 7 chip to you know plus 7 gigahertz with liquid nitrogen, then sure, you're probably going to want to go with an X370 board with some advanced overclocking features. But if you're an average everyday consumer who just wants to push their Ryzen chip to the, that sort of 4 or 4.2 gigahertz kind of sweet spot, then the B350 boards are going to be plenty fine for you. Some of them, especially on the ultra cheap side, may have uh, stuff like uh, V-droop or voltage droop um, and may not necessarily handle an overclock quite as well, just depending on the VRMs or voltage regulation modules setup. But for the majority of boards that I've personally tested, I haven't had an issue with that. So uh, it really kind of comes down to the individual boards and just check reviews uh, and sort of user experiences when it comes to, to that front. So which one of these boards is for you? Well, if you're someone who needs multi-GPU setups and all of the connectivity in the world, then definitely go grab an X370 board. But if you're basically anyone else, you're still looking to overclock, but you don't need a multi-GPU setup, you still get some extra connectivity, you can still normally have uh, plenty of other PCI devices like sound cards or Wi-Fi cards uh, available in the PC and they'll work just fine. But if you have a general use, if you're basically any sort of standard consumer, especially if you don't need multi-GPU support, then go grab a B350 board, save yourself some money and spend that extra money on getting a better graphics card or even a better CPU if you're uh, not already on the uh, Ryzen 7 side of things. So 
that's uh, that's the, that's my recommendation for you. So there you have it. If you're looking for a new PC, and especially if you're already on the path to Ryzen, then hopefully this video has helped you at least understand which platform is right for you. And uh, for the most of you, it's going to be the B351. But otherwise, uh, hopefully that is kind of interesting, informative, and uh, generally useful for you. If it is, feel free to hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below if you are planning to build a new system, especially if it's a Ryzen one, and of course which motherboards you either have or went with in the comments down below. There will be other videos over here for you and I will try and leave the Ryzen playlist so that you can check out all the reviews of these CPUs and probably even these motherboards in the uh, videos that are on the end cards over here for you. Of course, if you want to help me make these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis, then feel free to take a look at the Patreon link in the description down below where you can directly support me and help me make these videos. Or if you want to less directly support me but you shop on Amazon or Overclockers UK, there are affiliate links down there below too where you can uh, just click on those when you're buying stuff and that helps me out pretty massively. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and informative. As I said, if you did, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Check out some of the other videos over there and we'll see you all in the next one.